The interesting thing about the Rapti and what they are going to lead the story with is car-like charging. So the charge port is basically just above your crotch with a click, uh, with a flap, which clicks into places at pressure. Uh, I did obviously manage to sit too far front the first time and get it to open. Not a problem. Didn't happen again. And it takes a CCS2 gun. Super. So the charger is on board already. That's a 3.3 kilowatt charger. Uh, just for reference, if you were to buy an ultraviolet, you would get a 1 point something kilowatt charger as standard and you'd buy the boost charger, which is also 3.3 kilowatt. So a compact 3.3 charger is on board the motorcycle anyway. So what you're going to get to carry with you if you wanted to charge anywhere is a plug point, wire and gun. What they're basically saying is this is your backup system. Because it is CCS2, you can just go to any car okay. charging station and charge the machine. If you were to do that, it can draw up to 7 kilowatts. Okay. Again, for reference, Ultraviolet's proprietary fast charge network is 12 kilowatts. So they won't let you access all the car chargers unless you buy their adapter plug, which Ultraviolet now sells. If you were to do that, 12 kilowatt is the highest you can get to. I think they call it the supernova charger or whatever. This thing will always charge at 7 kilowatts if you go to a car charger. To demonstrate this at the factory, they had a BE6 charging. And then they unplugged the B6, did the billing, billing, whatever, and then they plugged in the motorcycle and the motorcycle started to charge. I'm taking out the iPad because now we will leave the numbers. Okay. So for the charging thing, uh, you will basically take 60 minutes on the standard charger to get from 20 to 80. Okay. And that's just the wire. And if you were to use a CCS2, you would do the same thing in 36 minutes. Okay. So in 36 minutes, you would recover. 20 to 80%. Your range numbers are uh, the factory claimed ARI number is 200 and the real world number is 150. That's the charging picture. So the first powerful uh, convenience of this machine is the charger is on board. So you only have to carry a wire if you must. And if you don't carry a wire, you just find a car charging station with an empty slot, plug your motorcycle in and you can charge there. To enable CCS2 charging like this natively, they actually went with a 240 volt architecture, which is the first really, really big deal about this machine. Just for reference, most of our vehicles run between 48 to 60, maybe 90 volts. Nothing runs higher than this. And they are saying this is one of the biggest assets. And the logic for this is uh, voltage, if you raise, then the amount of current for the same amount of power falls a lot. Creating lower current outputs means less heat, less transmission losses, etc., etc. is a more efficient it's way. It's more to efficient. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And by Joule's law, the less current you use, the less heat you have to deal with because the heat production also falls. So what they're basically saying is when we go to 240 volts, then all of these systems just become a heck of a lot more efficient. And that's, to me, half the story. But the demonstration of the story is absolutely emphatic. So I rode this motorcycle basically down to when it glitched. Okay, when it glitched, I was 1.7 kilometers or something from the office and the machine was showing 4 kilometers of range and it glitched and died and they later debugged the glitch and said, we don't know what happened. This is a completely new kind of glitch. So we've never encountered this before. So in theory, I should have reached the hotel with 2 kilometers of range left. Instead, I got stranded 1.7 kilometers out, no stress. This entire run, I could not get the motor to overheat. Okay. Most of the time, it stays blue. So effectively, just below great optimum temperature. And when I sat at the top speed, like sort of like this, and I'm not using that footage because it's on an empty road, I think I'm doing the safe thing, but I'm actually testing, and therefore it will look illegal to you, so I'm not using that part of the footage. But I basically sat at 120-ish, like this, on an empty road for a long stretch, I'm gonna say like 14, 15, 18 kilometers, and rode hard everywhere else anyway. The best I could do on a reasonably warm Chennai morning was a green. Wow. Never saw orange never saw red, could not tell any duration at all. Until I hit 30% battery, at which point some of your riding modes disappear. And then another, I think 5% or 8, 10% later, then it goes into effectively a limp home mode, where you do have some amount of acceleration, it will hit about 65 kilometers an hour flat out, but it will not do this quickly. So I was returning back to the airport. Uh, and on that stretch, there are lots of bus stations and bus stops on the left. And I really struggled there because the buses were basically cut across you. And you don't have enough acceleration to get out of their way very quickly. So either you have to quickly make a direction change 
or you have to really slow down, let the bus do its thing, then deal with the other two wheelers who are making direction changes and do have acceleration. That part got a little bit complicated. But that was post low state of charge. And what is that low state of charge? 30 to 20 percent range, uh, SOC left. So the rest of the time, it ran just as hard as far as I can tell from when I left the hotel with 100 percent charge, I think 98 percent charge, till the point where it said, I have a cut off here. Below this, we cannot do this. Mm -hmm. Until that point, I could not see any significant change in performance. I could not see the motor heating up. Mm -hmm. Solid. Wow, that is that is really cool. That is very impressive. Now, so because just, uh, before we move forward, just for context, cars, most of the cars that we had uh, have also even now, EVs that are running are in this 300 volt zone. There is the higher end cars are looking at 800 volts, right? Which is like another massive step, which will change again how you design your battery packs and the charging speeds and all of that. So 240 volts for a, a two wheeler. That's uh, yeah. And the fastest, most efficient machines. You remember, like the uh, BYD or somebody said, uh, what a thousand kilometers on a charge and all of this. Those are all 1100 volts plus, and right. the voltage is only rising now. So this was the story that Rapti told us, right? Because we went to high voltage architecture, our heat management is awesome, the need to heat manage heat is much lower, performance outputs are far more stable, blah, blah, blah. And big deal, I can go and charge anywhere I like. So there are 30,000 car charging stations today, they're all Rapti compatible as it were. Electric motorcycles, their time hasn't quite come, but it seems like a very interesting step has been taken by the Rapti T30. Why exactly is that? You can catch up on the entire conversation with Shumi telling me the experience of his ride with the T30 around Chennai. The video is playing right now on the motoring app, which is free to download and free to sign up on.